I'm Jeffrey Howard, uh, publisher of Walking Horse Report, also a director at the Celebration. And uh, I recently wrote an article uh, in the report about the 2021 season. Uh, there's been a lot going on, a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, but uh, I, I just wanted to take an opportunity to talk about what we see happening uh, in 2021. Um, like I said, the, the environment we're coming into is an uncertain one, but what is certain is, is the 2021 show season will go on. Uh, it will be with our current horse. It will be with no changes to any equipment or anything of that nature. Um, and so 2021 should be able to build upon what we are able to accomplish in 2020. There's new shows that have been added to the schedule. We get off to a big start this year. Obviously our trainer show in March, but April has uh, three weeks right in a row of, of really big shows with the Southern Championship moving. Jimbo Connor and his group uh, adding a show up in the Gatlinburg area, uh, as well as the Fast Spring uh, Showcase. So I think the show season will get off to a really good start. As for what we can expect to see happen um, in 2021, you've got um, the legislative situation uh, is one where obviously any bill, uh, whether that be introduced uh, to the advancement of the Tennessee walking horse or to the detriment of the Tennessee walking horse would have to be reintroduced. As of um, this here in February, no bill has been introduced. Um, and I'm not sure that we're certain of what types of bill uh, or bills will be introduced. It is not a certainty that the PAST Act will be reintroduced um, as part of uh, the compromise and, and a, an attempt at a compromise piece of legislation uh, last year. Um, the animal welfare community is now split um, on exactly which direction they want to go. Is that back to the original past act or uh, that they would have um, a compromise in mind there. So we have already uh, talked with uh, several people, veterinarian groups, uh, as well as some of the sponsors of the previous past act. Of, and, and there's no clear cut uh, direction that anyone is going on that. So I just don't think from a legislative perspective, you will see um, much movement in 2021 and definitely not a solution ever would be implemented in, in this year that would affect this year's so, show season. So I just don't think, it's not that we don't need to pay attention to legislation um, and, and the opportunity for there to be either legislation to our benefit or paying attention if it's to our detriment, but I just don't see in any scenario where that would affect um, this, sh this show season and probably not the next couple of show seasons if you talk about a legislative solution. Definitely what's different, at least for two more years, is, is that the um, Democrats do control the House, the Senate, obviously in the presidency, so there will be a new um, Secretary of Agriculture. All indications of that will be Tom Vilsack, um, former, uh, former Ag Secretary, as well as Governor of Iowa. Um, and so he was there in all eight years of uh, Obama's term. He was there. Uh, when the rule uh, that basically implements the PAST Act uh, was brought about by uh, USDA and APHIS and went all the way through. As we all know, that kind of switches us over to the rulemaking and um, definitely something that's probably the most pressing issue uh, on the industry when you look towards uh, a change is, is, the, uh, is the rulemaking. And so the existing rule um, that was there in 2016 and almost published in 2017, uh, the status of that rule is no different um, than it was previously. Um, it is got a, a uh, lawsuit uh, that the HSUS filed trying to get the USDA to be forced to implement that rule. Um, it was dismissed in the lower court. It is actually in the circuit court of appeals right now and there's no um, date set for, for exactly when a decision will come about on that. So in terms of, um, I think there's been some misinformation that as soon as Biden was inaugurated that the pad and the chain were gone and we tried to get that um, misinformation clarified and that did not happen. Um, there was also some, some information about that the past act got included in the spending bill at the end of the year. That is not true either. Um, the only thing that was included in that that is relative to Tennessee walking horses was the budget for the USDA and APHIS was doubled from approximately a million to two million for enforcement of the act. So definitely they do have that money this year for enforcement of the act. But in terms of uh, the rulemaking, it's important that our industry be um, looking towards what is it that we want um, and are we going to stand pat and, and wait for another rule? 
uh, that is sure to come about or are we going to try to proactively go and petition the USDA for rulemaking that has our solution in it, uh, whatever that may be. And so that is something that definitely trainers, owners, celebration breeders, everybody needs to be thinking about because um, we don't want to get lulled to sleep thinking, well, you know, it didn't happen and so now we can just go along. But again, I don't see from a rulemaking perspective anything that would uh, alter the 2021 show season. I do, uh, I am encouraged to have met several times with the trainers already this year um, and they are looking uh, at, at what they can do uh, to improve uh, upon the image of the horse um, uh, in inspection. Um, definitely they have um, met with uh, several HIOs, not just the show HIO, about implementing penalties for anyone that's failing the swabbing pro uh, program that the USDA has been working on with the HIOs and so uh, definitely a step in the right direction there. We absolutely, um, if we are going to ask for objective testing, if we are going to ask for scientific testing just like the other breeds um, are conducting in, a, at their shows, we have to pass those. If we're not able to pass those types of tests, we, we are going to struggle to win any argument uh, about the perception of our horse or the reality of what it takes for us to show our horse. So that is something that we definitely need to uh, be focused on in 2021 and I, I commend the trainers and uh, the Trainers Association specifically for, for wanting to step up there and ask the HIOs to implement penalties uh, so that they can uh, make sure that their members are following the rules as we have them. So again, I think that will be something in 2021 that is different. Uh, but again, I look for there to be uh, big shows. Uh, I'm so encouraged that there are new shows. I think some of our shows that were affected by the pandemic last year will be back. Um, and uh, we were really lucky, I think, last year, starting in June, to have a pretty normal show season uh, that, that uh, other breeds weren't really able to, to do. And so uh, I, I'm really looking, looking forward to that. Celebration recently formed a committee um, to look at the class sheet uh, for the 2021 World Championship show, uh, and, and um, that'll be out. It'll uh, have a 30-day comment period from the public. There were a lot of changes recommended by that committee. I really commend them for the hard work that they did. I mean, a lot of changes. And so those are not set in stone. They are recommendations from that committee. There'll be a 30-day comment period. So we'll do an excellent job, I hope, of getting that out um, through avenues such as What a Horse, but also the breeders, uh, all the industry publications, the owners, the trainers, uh, state associations, because we really want people to uh, be aware of that. But uh, this, the class sheet had some areas that it could be improved upon for horses being able to show multiple times at the show, have the appropriate rest between when they were shown and when, when they were uh, showing back for the ability for horses to be able to be shown in amateur and open divisions and just try to spread those out so that the same horse uh, can show multiple times at the celebration. Obviously that is a bigger deal in our flat shot division, but it's also a big deal in our, our performance division. So I think that is um, something that, that um, will be an improvement, but also uh, at the celebration, it is important for us. We really want to uh, reach out and, and have the feedback of the industry and really start to form committees. We have another committee looking at uh, the show HIO rule book uh, and the standards, um, especially in the uh, flat shot division, what are the standards and standards for judging. And so that's something that we've tried to get a diverse group of people together to look at. And uh, so I think that's even, even going to be better uh, and, and try to clarify our rule book. Recently, we, we put an article out about how uh, rules violations can be reported, whether that be at the horse show or through our committee or if our committee finds something out. There is a show. Uh, rule, rules committee uh, uh, that's set up within the show HIO as well as a judging committee. So just giving people an opportunity to know how they can provide the feedback uh, and, and have a say. Uh, I hear that a lot, that people want a say and people want uh, a seat at the table and things of that nature will step up uh, and participate, um, provide your feedback. Uh, but uh, just as Jerry and I talked prior to, to filming this, I mean, it's, it's more about bringing forth solutions instead of talking about what are the problems. And so I think that's what the industry needs to be focused on. Uh, the National Academies of Science, um, hopefully all of you have had an opportunity to read that. There were some long held industry beliefs that were backed up in that. Um, certain things such as um, 
the use of objective and scientific testing and the need for that, uh, the need for the in inspectors to be um, experienced, it even went as, as far as to say accredited experienced veterinarians and that was the way to have more reliable inspections. Uh, so a lie said that the SCAR rule is unenforceable is written and so uh, there was a lot in there uh, that backed up a lot of, of what uh, the industry felt um, it needed to be changed in. It's also very important to know that that was requested at, as a joint effort between the industry, the USDA, and the Tennessee Department of Agriculture. I can't really think of a time before where those three entities were seeking something uh, similar. And so I think that is, a, is, is in and of itself a big deal right there. The committee recommended uh, different language for the SCAR rule. I think uh, that is something that needs to continue to be looked, uh, looked at. Um, but uh, something that's interesting there is February 20th is the USDA training. It'll be a virtual training, but uh, to this point in time, the USDA hasn't uh, commented publicly about the National Academies of Science study. I do think they will, and I think they'll um, try to implement some of those things, uh, but the industry is also going to need to try to implement some of those things. That's why we're embracing the swabbing program, and, and, and uh, we're definitely, it would be, I won't say impossible, but highly unlikely that the show HIO and our exhibitors could help fund licensed, accredited, uh, experienced equine veterinarians to conduct all inspections. But I think just as that committee uh, stated that if you can't do it that way, um, you know, definitely have those people training your DQPs. And so I think that's something that the show HIO and all HIO should step up and do. So um, definitely I think 2021 is going to be really, really um, a good year, but there is a lot happening. We'll do our best through uh, avenues such as this, but also the report and uh, other gatherings in the industry, TWEBA meetings, owner meetings, to try to keep everybody up to speed because things are happening. Um, and we have definitely lost some of our ability to um, uh, control uh, what is going on uh, legislatively and things with some of the, the people that have been so supportive of our industry are not the, in, in that, that party is not in power right now. So some of the ability uh, for what comes to the floor and what committees see this and, and, and how those flow through, we have lost some of that, but we haven't lost all of that. Um, and our argument is a good argument, but what we need to be certain of is, is that we can base what we want on one of two things, sound science um, and, and, and proof data data is the basic thing is we want our data to back our position and then we need to be cognizant and aware of how other breeds uh, show competitive breeds are treated and, and um, the types of equipment that they show in the types of uh, inspections that they have and, and just get ourselves on a level playing field david williams always says something that i think is is so true is is uh, we're in competition with other breeds for the owner's dollars and so we are just an option that they have if they want to show horses. And so we shouldn't be held to any standard different than what our competitive show breeds and other competitive show breeds are held to. And I think that always resonates with people when he says that, uh, and it definitely resonates with me. That's, that's, that's true. If it's about the welfare of the horse, it should be about the welfare of all horses, not just Tennessee walking horses. And so if it's allowed in other breeds, it can't be to the detriment of their welfare. So uh, I look forward to seeing everyone at a show this year and appreciate Jerry and, and what a horse uh, providing an opportunity for me to update uh, from our perspective, kind of where we see things going. Thanks.